God and Father, we're grateful and thankful and appreciative of your faithfulness towards us. We've gathered tonight to inquire in the temple to take your yoke upon ourselves and to learn of you. We pray for these teaching moments you would give us insight and revelation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. We praise God for your faithfulness tonight and those of you who have made the decision to come to the house of the Lord and to worship the Lord in the study of his word. Praise God for the faithful. I want to thank God again even for those of you who are, uh, we often refer to, are our victorious viewers. And every week you share with us. And we thank God for your presence tonight. We are going to uh, continue in the series of our studies as we come to the close of the year and continue to share with you what the Spirit has spoken by way of vision as we uh, continue to expound on manifest destiny. And so would you this evening share with us in the word of the Lord. It is a familiar passage of scripture, but we pray that a greater understanding and revelation would be our portion in Jesus' name. The book, prophetic book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter number two. Habakkuk chapter number two, beginning at verse one. And we'll end at verse 5. We will read and then come back for further explanation and exegesis of the scriptures. Beginning at verse number 1 of chapter 2. Ready? Let's read. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Get this. Verse number four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, But the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgresseth, transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. And so far, the scripture. This evening, I'd like to reason with your understanding and put tag and title on the teaching. Tonight, I just want to exhort you to wait for the vision. Wait for the vision. If I were to summarize this text, it seems as if Habakkuk is giving this message and the topic of this message seems to really deal with delayed vision and attempts to help us to understand why it might be taking so long for vision to manifest or be fulfilled. 
When God shares a vision, and I want to say it as a preface to the lesson. When God shares the vision, beloved, we need to have patience and endurance. And lastly, know what it means to walk by faith. Let's go back here and listen to the word of the Lord. See what the Lord is really telling us. Let's kind of go back and then come forward. We notice that here in verse 5, it shares that the just shall live by his faith. And of course, we all know that the New Testament uh, teaches us that not only do they just live by faith, but that there is a received reward for vision being fulfilled by faith. You'll find in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, verses 35 to 38, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet in a little while, and he who will come shall come. And he will not, catch this word, because you see it in Habakkuk, and will not tarry or delay. Did you didn't know what God is saying to you this evening about when he gives you a vision for your life, when he gives you a vision for your calling and what he has purpose you to do. Whew. Here's the thing. It took faith for the people of Judah to live the way God wanted them to live and to know what it meant to abide by his timing. Let's face it, beloved, and here we are, just put it out on the table. We, by nature, are impatient. If it doesn't happen within a timely fashion, we become discouraged, we become doubtful, and we then turn from God to our own abilities. I'm telling you what I know. I got my hand up. Pastor, what are you going to confess that I, like you, am a person of like passion? Just a few weeks ago, I had to be harnessed and arrested by the Holy Spirit because I was in the midst of pursuing something that I wanted. And I was going after it, mother, with all of my ingenuity, all of my skill. And then I was disappointed when I didn't receive what I was going after. The opportunity came up again. And I got right in that mode to start to go into my business mindset. And the Holy Spirit said to me, did you ask me for it? And I said, no, Lord, I didn't. He said, didn't I say if you ask, I'll give it to you? If you seek me, you'll find. If, if you knock, I'll open the door for you. And beloved, I retracted all of my efforts, put all of my savvy and whatever information and intellect I thought I had aside, and I said, God, you do it. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. God's timing is not always our timing. Amen. The old folks had something. You know, they, they might not have been as intellectual. They, you know, they, they <laughs> might not have had all of the information and education that we have. But I'm telling you, they understood it and you could hear it in their devotion to God. 
and they speak up and let you know in song. He may not come when you want him to, but when he shows up, it's going to be right on time because God's timing is so much different than ours. And what we can't take is God trying to process us. We want God to give us and make us finished products. I won't learn no lesson. I want the blessing. Y'all ain't, I know y'all ain't saying nothing, but I'll put myself out there. Since y'all don't want to come with me, and, and those at home too, y'all know how we do. No, 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 no. Just give it to me, Lord. You got something for me? No, no, no. no. And, and, and it kind of reminds me of a ministry that God had me to establish uh, in this church many years ago. Oh, goodness, maybe about 25 or more years ago. Uh, it's a ministry to... Uh, uh, to those without, and, and it's an outreach ministry that we refer to uh, so affectionately as the least of these. And so uh, we would bring these persons in off the street, many of them, and uh, we'd feed them right there uh, in uh, our church. And uh, the whole premise was you're going to get a meal but you got to hear the word of God first. And you should see folks squirming. Huh? Just feed me, Rev. I ain't about to hear no preaching. I'm hungry, man. Huh? Yeah, okay. Let's see how hungry you really are. Let's see where your heart is. Because the reality is God says, you're not going to get what I got and don't have me. Because I could feed you and you'll be hungry in an hour. But if you get me, you'll have a testimony. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He, want. he is my Jehovah Jireh and supplies all of my needs. So here we are, understanding that Faith is what is required. Can I help you to know that faith is not a tool to be used at your convenience? It is not a magic wand. Faith, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is a lifestyle. We read in verse 5, the just shall live. It's a lifestyle, your whole life. You don't just pull faith out of your pocket and say, God, I want this house. And then put it back in your pocket until you have another need. It's a lifestyle. You believe God to get up out of your seat. You believe God that when you get up out of your seat, you'll have the ability to walk to your car and be able to meander your way through traffic, get home safely. All of these things, not presumptuous, but the just live by faith. We believe there's going to be food to eat. There'll be clothing to wear. We won't be out in the cold for the rest of the winter because our whole lives are based upon the premise of faith. Let's look and see what's going on here. What, what we must learn from this passage. These were difficult times for the people of Judah. And you have to understand they're dealing with a time of bondage. And uh, you got to understand, beloved, when you've been through something uh, traumatic, the enemy's desire is that that trauma begins to impact you so that you never recover from it. And it puts a big question mark in your spirit as to whether God hears you, whether your relationship with him is still what it is. And if God was all that you claimed him to be, why did not circumstances, listen to this, that you prayed for, wasn't like you went out on your own. You sought the Lord about. Why did those things turn out favorably? Now you want to take your faith 
and say, what good is it to have it if it's not going to produce what I want? But you must understand the objectivity of faith is not about pleasing you. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Because faith, again, is not just a mental exercise or some mental gymnastics and you know superstitious folks they they cross their fingers they cross their eyes they cross their legs they... faith is not wishful thinking faith is confidence in God's word can I say it again faith is confidence in what God says, not in what he does. Because if he chooses to do nothing, I don't put him in remembrance of what his past performance was. I put him in remembrance of his word, Lord, you said. And that is what I believe. And so here we are. We got to learn something. That if God has given us a vision, that we shouldn't allow ourselves to become impatient by taking things into our own hands. The Lord will allow us, if we do that, to go in our own way. How many will confess there have been times where you've seen God let you do what you wanted to do? And it wasn't what he wanted you to do. And you had to end up paying for it. Because you knew you should have listened and waited for God. And so you went ahead of him and he's going to let you do it. He's going to let you do it. Until you recognize that you need him. Kind of puts me in the mind of a story I heard about a mother who took her son shopping with her often. And the little boy was just so precocious. Every time they'd go shopping, that was his deal was. You know, he'd always kind of get away from her and just stray off in the store somewhere. But he always kept her in view. And she go looking around and he go to playing and he knew that she's around there, he go to playing and what have you. So one time, mother said, I'm going to fix him. So she, he went to wandering off and she went and hid herself behind a rack of clothes. He went to looking, where's mom? <laughs> And then she, she let him stew for a little while. Then she appeared from behind the clothes. He ran to her. Mommy, where was you at? Huh? She said, mm-hmm. And guess what? The whole rest of the time they were in the store, she ain't had no problems. He was right up under her. Every once in a while, God will let you go ahead and stray like you want to. He said, okay, I'm going to get you. Now you're going to look for me, and I'm going to hide myself. Then you start crying out, Lord, where are you? He reappears and said, here I am. I told you I'll never leave you. But now you got to appreciate my presence and never take things for granted. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Not just when I have problems, but every hour, good, bad, or indifferent, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. And so here we are again, dealing with what we need and that is to be patient for the vision is for an appointed time though it tarries wait for it so many times we've blown it beloved because of what we see we walk by faith and not by so you can't go by what you see if God said he's going to do it and that's the important thing are you dealing with your own emotions your own thinking your own intellect your own selfish desire but if God spoke and said certain things would take place you got to trust him no matter how it looks as though it's going in the opposite direction I'm talking about manifestation tonight. And you're going to have to posture. I don't care. I can preach all day. God's going to manifest. But if you don't believe it, you'll miss it. You all understand what I'm talking about. Amen. Come on. Come on, widow. Come on, deacon. Let's 
let's go home for a little while. Here at Hampton Roads, we've been blessed uh, pretty much. Uh, the average citizen has an automobile. Uh, uh, in this Hampton Roads area, trust me, because I know, I tried it one time, horrible, and that is uh, the mass transit system. It is very possible you can wait on a bus for an hour or more, and uh, it might not even come. But in the uh, city of New York, it's a way of life. Uh, people do mass transit, buses, trains, and that's the way they get around. I remember as a youngster going by bus often from our, our home in Brooklyn and going to wherever I needed to go, whether it be church, visit friends, family, or whatever. Uh, on this one occasion, I was trying to make this youth service at another church, and a bunch of us as young people uh, were trying to get to this church. We stood at the bus stop, and it looked after 15, 20 minutes, the bus wasn't coming. So we said, well, what we'll do is we'll walk a few blocks, maybe to the next bus stop. And sure enough, we got to the next bus stop, and the bus still hadn't come. And in our impatience trying to get there again, we decided, let's not wait, let's go. And so we went on to the next bus stop. By that time, Lady Putney, we had almost walked to the church because of our impatience. And as we are now walking about a block or so from the church, who passes us by? The bus with all of its passengers. Because of our impatience, the bus passed us by and got to the destination before we did by foot. I'm crying, Savior, Hear my humble cry, and while all others thou art calling, do not. Don't do me like the bus did and pass me by because I'm so impatient. I'm going to start out on my own. This is important. I, I, I got to review this text with you. He, he, he says... I'm going to put myself, he's speaking figuratively, in a position where uh, I can be watchful. He, he uses the euphemism uh, of being one in a tower, guarding and watching. He says, and I want to see what the Lord will say to me. Beloved, that's where it all begins. Your ability to hear God. Do you not know there are believers today that wouldn't know the voice of God if he spoke because of their infamiliarity with personal devotion? And so as a result, all the voice of God they hear is what comes from the pulpit. But in most cases, what comes from the pulpit is a general feeding and not a specific rhema to individuals. You will hear God and you will become accustomed to hearing God from your personal devotion. I'm telling you, beloved, if you haven't developed that holy habit, start it now, get it going every single day. Not always begging and asking, just some time to be meditative. Lord, speak to me. Lord, give me direction. Lord, show me which way I should go. Because how many of us will confess the majority of the crazinesses in our lives is because of bad decision making? Lord, if I could turn back time, don't leave past under the bus. Come on, join me here. If I could do life all over, so many decisions, I'd, but had I waited on God, he would have directed my path. But when I'm led by my emotions and I'm led by my intellect and I'm led by what I think is convenient for me, it is very probable that I will err in my ways. 
but the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in their way. Hear this. and We're almost where we need to be to conclude. He says, the Lord answered me. Is that good? To know that if you look for him, if you seek him, if you call upon him, he will answer. The Bible says in verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said the following, write the vision. That's our problem. We see visions and never write them down. And you already know if you can lose your keys, what do you think you'll do with what the Lord spoke? You're not that bright. You know what I'm telling you? That is why, amen, there's always a rehearsing whenever there's a trial to go over evidence, because if there's not a rehearsing, how many know whatever that testimony is, is liable to change. You got to get it while it's fresh. And the stenographer is to get in there and take those notes down, because you were like, nah, nah, I think it was the night in question. No, no, it wasn't that. I thought it was, no. Write the vision, he says and make it plain upon tables. These are not tables upon which you are to eat. These are tablets in those days, wooden tablets with these inscriptions. They were large wooden tablets. Write the vision, make it plain upon tables, check it out, that he may run that readeth it. Now listen to this. It's not about running after. We've we done botched this up so many times, Pastor uh, McCray. It ain't about running after you read it. What he's really saying is it ought to be such a visibility. In other words, Lord is, the Lord is saying, make the vision like a billboard. So if people were running, they could still read it. It's just like you'd see on a highway. There's a billboard. I don't care if you're going by 65 miles an hour. It's so big, you can still see it. It is so large. It is so plain. And that's how vision has got to be in your life to come. It's got to be bigger than you. It's got to be larger than you. And now all of a sudden, society wants to get smart and you think you all that. You got these little, these little white ch- uh, boards at your house talking about this is my vision board. You could have read Habeka and saved yourself some money. He says, I need your vision to be billboard size. Why? So it can keep you, you ready for this? in remembrance and make you accountable because it's not just about you reading it it's about others being able to read it and that's why amen that vision needs to be shared with family friends and those that you can trust with it so they can hold you accountable see it's 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 this it's the young young girl who is now in college who's aspiring to be a nurse and she's cut out of magazines and put all over her room these named hospitals that she envisions herself working at so every day she's reminded and people around her say how's school coming along how's nursing coming because remember you're looking to be a nurse in this hospital one day and keeps her accountable so she's not now talking about, well, class was hard today. I don't think I'm going to make it. Come on here. You ought to have been to school, no? Amen. If you know like I know, my freshman year, I changed my major three times. Three. Oh, I'm going I'm to be a doctor. 
Amen. After a few biology classes, I quit. I quit. I'm going to be a lawyer. My political science class was at 8 o'clock in the morning. My dormitory was at the whole of the end of the campus. 6 o'clock rolled around. And that spirit of sleep said, we ain't going today. Needless to say, my whole vision for being a lawyer was canceled. Huh? I'm going to be a sociologist. Thank you, Jesus. So I started dabbling in the social sciences, sociology, psychology, and it, it worked pretty good, and I kind of stuck with it, even though it really wasn't God's purpose for my life, but it would help me in my development because ministry means people. And if you don't know how to deal with people, then you should get out of the ministry. So I'm trying to get you to understand that that vision has to be so big that it not only keeps you mindful, but it keeps you <clears throat> accountable. For the vision is for, help me say, an appointed time. I want y'all to get that. The vision is for an appointed time. And beloved, this society of ours, I've never seen so many undisciplined people. The appointment is at noon. What you showing up at 12.30 for? And then get an attitude when you can't be seen. It's for an appointed time. And if you're really serious about it, how many know you'll get there early? to ensure that you're in the right place. As you often heard pastors say, service can't start at 12 if you get here at 12. You gotta be in place, ready to go. And so I hear the Lord saying, how can I manifest anything to you if you have not met the appointed time? And since you might not be aware of the appointed time, it would behoove you and I to always be in place. I don't like that, Pastor Rogers. I got stuff to do. Well, it lets me know that your priority is not vision. If you got so many things to do that you can't be before God on a consistent basis because you know at any time or any place God could reveal and manifest that thing to you. The vision is for an appointed time, but at the end, it will speak, it will manifest, it'll let you know, I'm here. It will not lie. It will not be deceptive. And that's what you got to rebuke that spirit that tells you, I've been hoodwinked. I've been deceived before. And I don't want to be let down again. It shall speak and not lie. Though it looks like it's taking time, though it tarry, do what? Wait for it. Beloved, my God, I come to tell you, if you understand the gravity of what God wants to manifest to you, you'll understand. My God, look at somebody and tell them it's worth the wait. Some things you got to prioritize and say, hey, you know, I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time for nothing. But this, this is worth, worth waiting for. I, 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 I waited for the Lord, David said. Mm-hmm. And he inclined unto me. He leaned in. And that's what God is looking for. Patience in the earth. What a virtue that is. For in your patience, you possess your soul. You lose your mind when you're impatient. But in patience, you possess your soul. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Because, wait for it, why? Because it will surely come. Huh? Weeping may or may not, but joy, what? Will come. It will surely come. It will not tarry. 
Let's close. Verse 4 says, For behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. And I'm telling you, beloved, that's the society we're living in. A society of overconfident, a society of conceited, prideful people who feel like God is taking too long. I don't have time for this religious stuff, they call it. I need things to happen when I need them to happen. Now, I can't wait for somebody up in the sky to do something. And who said God was in the sky? Ain't never heard nothing like that before. And, 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 no. We do that stuff. We characterize God up in the sky. So how can God be in the sky and still be a very present help? I don't live in the sky. So what I need God in the sky for? He's a very, lo, I am with you. And wherever you are, that's why Jehovah what? Shama. He is with you. He is there, not in the sky. You got to get people to change their mentality and understand. If you're looking for the Lord, look no further. Right here. This is God's residence. We sing it every Easter. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. You say that, but do you believe that? That he's a very present help. And so here we are. He will surely come and will not tarry. The soul that, uh, which is lifted up is not up and right, it's not upright in him. And so wherever there is haughtiness, conceit, huh? Yeah. Pride go before destruction, a haughty spirit before the fall. When you're self-confident and self-reliant, you're going to find everything will fail. But when your trust and confidence is put in God, Jesus never fails. The Holy Soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but let's close. The just, you ready for this, shall live by his faith. Let's find out who the just are. Can I help you to know that the just are not people that get everything right? I know that's what you thought. Oh, they just. No. The just are people who live by faith. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 being justified how? By faith we have peace with God. See how it goes? So you're only just when you're living by faith. The just shall live by faith. Your justification comes from faith. Faith in the living God, faith in a God of ability, not only that he can, but he will. Everybody kind of believes God can. The question is, will he? And if you walk in faith, faith is that which grows by experience. And if you've never had an experience with God, you've cheated your life. Your, your, your first encounter with God ought to be like your first encounter with a Lay's potato chip. Huh? Y'all come on here, don't y'all leave me out here by myself. You say it, and you start looking at the back of the bag, and the back of the bag says, one serving, eight chips. And you count them out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you close the bag back like you're going to eat eight chips, one serving, and you're going to be done. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Not five minutes passes by. You're on your way to that yellow bag. Because the commercial told you you can't eat just one. If you ask have a real encounter with God you just can't walk away from that like you don't believe it'll happen again you come back and say God do it again father I 
loved the experience I had when I sensed your presence and anointing upon me. The ability to lay hands upon the sick, they recover. Lord, I thank you for the ability to cast out devils. And anytime you've moved in that kind of supernatural experience, you don't just walk away and say, I'll see you whenever I see you. You want it again and again and again and again and again. All right. So I want to share with you this evening. The manifestation is coming. No doubt about it. We just read it. It will surely come. Beloved, if the vision doesn't make its way into your personal lives, you hear what I'm saying, beloved? I need that vision to be a billboard. In your, I need it to be so big that you can't avoid it. Stop shoving God's agenda in the corner somewhere and you trying to do your thing. And so many people will find that their lives now are in catch-up stages because they did all this stuff on their own. Now they finally hit the vein of what God's purpose is for their life. Now they got to make up for the years. And thank you, Jesus that the Lord winks at our foolishness and says, I know you played around, but I'm going to restore to you the years that you played around and let the enemy deceive you. And you know what I mean? Bashful and shy. I can't do this. What will the people say? I don't, I ain't been to Bible school. I ain't got no degree. Really? Ask Moses, he'll tell you. I had to get over myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ask Jeremiah. I had to stop making my age an excuse. Ask Gideon. My family, my family, I come from the wrong side of the tracks. I come from people who don't claim. I ain't trying, Lord said, I ain't trying to hear that. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. You hear God talking to you? Come out of that cave. Come out of hiding. Stop trying to blend in with everybody and let God put the spotlight on you and say, yes, Lord, thy kingdom come. I didn't ask for this. It asked for me. You hear me? And I stand before you this evening because I simply told God, yes. A nine-year-old boy in the Brevoort Projects of Brooklyn, New York, simply told God, yes. I ain't done it before, don't know what I'm doing, and it don't even matter what my daddy's done. You talking to me. And so I think about all the years that I fought and kicked and did everything else, you know. You know what I mean? I went on, I did music and learned to play an instrument and Amen. Honed in my little skill and taught choirs and took a plain old church choir and turned them into national recording artists. And God said, that's cute. But that's not what I purpose you. I let you do that. Now I'm going to show you what I called you to do. And see where I am, Deacon, on my job in Staten Island, going back and forth on the Belt Parkway every day with Bible dictionary, concordance, all kind of reference Bibles, and the word of God sitting on the steering wheel against my chest as I'm trying to teach myself. Long before all these wonderful Bible institutes they got online now that you can get a little degree with a click of a button. I had to teach myself the word of God. And so everything that I've known comes from rehearsing it day after day after day after day, rereading and reading again. So when I ever got an opportunity to preach, Lord, where my preachers at? Because, you know, we, you know, Pastor might, might, you might not get, you might have gone a whole year. No, nah, I got this. One day your flowers will come, maybe. And so when you, whenever I got, I wanted to be ready. And so they would have me speak, uh, Lady Widow, on a Sunday afternoon with about 20 saints there, you know. 
at that time, there was a church of 1,500 folk. You couldn't, you couldn't get a seat in Bible. And so, you come, out, come out this afternoon, amen. Minister Michael Rogers will be bringing the word of God. About 20 folks showed up. And then I, I preached like it was 2,000. Did my homework. And, and then the mother, Lord, that boy, he, he, that boy got some information. And the words that he got a little information there. Child, did you hear Lord, the, 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 the pastor's son? Yeah, he, he just studied a little bit, talking about the little Greek. Uh, something he said, the little Greek is Hebrew or something. And uh, pray the Lord. And then it started getting rumored. And then those 20 people turned into 50. And 50 into 100. And then at the time, the time came, amen, Minister Rogers became Elder Rogers. Elder Rogers is preaching now. He done graduate. He preaching on Sunday night. Good God Almighty. Praise the Lord. He's doing the broadcast. Because pastors down somewhere in Portsmouth, Virginia, found in this church. And uh, so Elder Rogers is preaching Sunday. Oh, child, we don't have that time. You know that man can preach. You know, Lord, that young man can preach. But it all came because of my determination not to hide with the rest of my boys. I would have been comfortable doing what they did. But I heard God say, the deep calleth to the deep. I got something that's more important than you being on an organ. He saw what I didn't see, beloved. He saw all of this. I submit to you one more time. Wait for the vision. Give God praise with your hands, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you tonight. We thank God for the word of God. The manifestation will appear. Wait for it. It shall speak and not lie. It will surely come. Would you join me now as we prepare to offer God our midweek sacrifice Act that, ask that you would uh, take this opportunity to say to God how grateful we are, how thankful we are. He has made ways, open doors. He has provided for us. And so on this evening, would you uh, both here in uh, the cathedral as well as those of you who are watching us uh, on our social media outlets of Facebook Live and our YouTube channel, take this opportunity to share with us and so seed in this good crown called Kingdom Cathedral. Would you take those of you who are part and parcel of the ministry uh, this opportunity to offer God your tithe as well as your offerings? You don't have to do it before men. I'll wait till Sunday. No, you do it when God gives it to you. Because if you do it before men, you lose your reward. But if you do it as unto the Lord, the scriptures give us to understand, as you have sown bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. And because he loves a cheerful giver, God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you're having all sufficiency of all things may abound to every good work. Ways to give are apparent and known, in case you don't know and are not familiar. You can give via Cash App, that is dollar sign Kingdom Cathedral VA. Our website also allows a way to give, that's www.kingdomcathedral.org. Follow those prompts to give, and you can also, those of you at home, can write us here uh, at Kingdom Cathedral. 3820 Stone Show Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23455. I appreciate you. Thank you for partnering with us. If the Lord says the same, we'll see you one Sunday. Let's bless God for our streaming congregation in Jesus' name. Glory to God. God bless you, and thanks for viewing. Would you consider partnering with us with a financial contribution? We have three ways that you can give. Cash App, dollar sign, Kingdom Cathedral VA, or you can go to our website, www.kingdomcathedral.org. And the third way, you can write us, Kingdom Cathedral, 
3820 Stone Shore Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia 23452.